Well, good eye, everyone, and welcome back to Boggy Bottom Zoo. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day so far. And yeah, welcome. So today we are tackling easily the biggest build in Boggy Bottom. We are going to be working on the Crocosium. Now, this is a build I was very excited to do. I had this planned ever since the start, and I can't believe we finally made it this far to the point where we're actually being able to work on it. Now, this is going to be quite a big undertaking. In fact, I don't even think, sorry, I don't even think we finished the entire thing uh, in this build because I do want to circle back and have a little bit of a touch-up episode later down the line. And kind of just focus on like smaller exhibits, maybe get our Terrapins and our uh, Danub Crest and Newts in. I think I have some good little outlets where I could put them into once we actually do get to that point. But for the time being, I really just want the infrastructure for the entire Crocosium here. And yeah, that's about it. So in case if you guys aren't aware for the inspiration from this place, the Australia Zoo by the Irwin family actually does have this place called the Crocosium. And it's where the family does their little shows um, concerning like, you know, all the saltwater crocodiles and all their ambassador animals like their birds and pigeons and herons. I don't even know what they have. I don't know. I've never been. Uh, I think I know some people who have been, but you know, I've never been. But either way, here we are actually working on it. So they have a really cool setup. So they have this beautiful, beautiful grandstand kind of setup with uh, yellow chairs up on the top level and green chairs down below. And I really wanted a copy of that for this build. So we kind of work with that and we also have custom chairs and these will be in that final blueprint pack. I will have that going up relatively soon. I think it should be by the time I get back from vacation at least. Um, it should be up around that point, so hopefully you guys will be able to have it by then. But yeah, it was just really fun to put together. So I have these stairs all custom with like those little, uh, I don't know what, caution lines, I guess, caution tape, I don't really know. Uh, the yellow lines you see when you go on stairs, that's what I'm working with over here. But essentially we have that going on throughout the entire build, and it looks really good in the end. It just has like this nice little realism element to it. And I don't know, I'm just very happy with how well it all turned out, and just like kind of integrating all the, um, you know, all the realism in here that we can. All the walkways, which came out really well, just so that guests can actually access all that. Now, of course, this is not actually functional. It would have been cool to actually use the um, keeper talk things, but unfortunately, it really didn't come out all that well. Um, it, it just wasn't in the cards. I couldn't achieve something like that within the parameters of the game. Uh, trying to get something of this kind of style to match that and it was just like not really worth it in the end so we kind of do work with our own little style in the end but i'm so happy we do because it turned out so freaking cool so essentially this whole setup is kind of just building up the basics of this entire build uh we don't actually build for the saltwater crocodiles real habitat in this one we will build for them in the next episode so stay tuned for that but i really just wanted to get our big centerpiece done and it looks so cool from above you can see it from the entire like i'm not sure if you can see it from the entire zoo but you can see it when you look down on the zoo and it looks so cool just to have this beautiful big structure in here i also love how the roofing came out we'll get there when we actually do get there but no like check all this jazz out just like working with the stadium stands um and just making sure that the guests are able to sit wherever they can and just making sure that the water is where it's supposed to be and i also work with the uh, crocodilians in here admittedly i think i made it a little smidge too big but i think it's fine because this would be a high traffic zoo and this would be the star attraction of the zoo where like you know all the families go check out the shows and whatnot so that's essentially the goal right there just to get all that stuff done but also working on the exterior of the build itself I want to have this feel like it's nice big and supported so I have these kind of like big kind of concrete panels behind it just as a way to hold up all these stadium stands and I do kind of integrate that into the alligator habitat as well this might be a place where like they would get the alligators in I'm not really sure I haven't really planned for that yet uh, maybe they would just bring them in by hand maybe on a little leash 
Uh, I really haven't planned that. All I know is that the saltwater crocodiles are able to make their way on there. And they're kind of like the star attraction anyways. They're some like the largest crocodilians. So I really wanted to account for those guys right there. But essentially just dressing up the rest of the habitat. Not really habitat, but I guess the stadium. Uh, just making sure that everything kind of lines up nicely, especially like those little corner pieces. I really love the effect that they came out with. Like, you can kind of see like how they have like those shadows coming in play. I think that's pretty cool right there. Uh, and making our way throughout here. And just making some more mulch pieces as well, just to make sure it feels a lot more planted. Because I did want to have like an emphasis on green, and what better way to get green in here than plants. So we do work with a lot of that. And I don't know, I'm just very happy with that. And at this point, you could really start to see the build come into form. Uh, especially with like all the, um, you know, all the concrete and plaster in play. Just having it feel like it's a lot more solidified in its stance. I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say right here, but all I can say is that it turned out really good. Uh, and also making sure that our stairs go all the way up. Uh, and making sure the guests can actually access all the way up to the top row, which they can, which I'm very happy that that's able to work out like that. Also making sure that the stadium looks good from the outside as well. It's kind of boring from the outside, but at least it looks good. And something that the real Crocosseum has as well is like these beautiful glass panels that let in just a little bit of light. Uh, obviously we have like the whole main stage kind of open and, um, yeah, you know, all the guest shade is kind of taken into account for, but the stadium itself is very much naturally lit. I feel like the sun always hits the stage no matter what time, except, you know, when it's dark out and when it's nighttime, obviously. But working with all that stuff and also making sure that those big panels are there to support the roof, which I'm not sure if we actually get to just yet. I think we actually work over here first, which turned out to be quite a little bit of a challenge so I really wanted to have this be like a nice concrete pool uh, I really didn't want to integrate too much naturalism in here because I did want to go kind of on par with how the Australia Zoo has their crocosseum and the way that they have it it's very much I, I would describe it as golf coursey um, it's nothing too crazy they have like a nice little sloping concrete uh, kind of thing going down there i don't really know so we kind of work with that with a few of the plaster pieces and it's a little tedious but it does have a good effect in the end just to make sure that you're able to like you know account for all the curves and whatnot in a good way it's like the best ways possible so that was a little tedious to do but it all was worth it so much in the end because we get these beautiful curves going on in the habitat and we get like a nice little contrast between the water and the grass it just all turns out so good I don't know, I'm very happy with it. My only complaint is the actual dead area where you don't have stands, where you don't really have um too much going on. I think I'll try and integrate some, like, you know, maybe some popcorn stands or something over there. I'm not entirely sure. I think Drac actually released a really cool blueprint for that stuff, so we'll probably use that later down the line. But working over here, making sure that this little curve is taken into account as well. And I think I did pretty good over there. I don't know, it's just nothing crazy. Uh, some people have said that this looks kind of like a lily pad, and I think that's kind of cute. Like the uh, whole land area in, contra in contrast to the actual water area. I think that's kind of cute. And that's a little porthole that they use to actually access their own pool. So a saltwater crocodile would kind of come in from that little hatch. So hutch, hatch, I don't really know. So they would lift the little door over there. I don't even think I add the door in this episode. I think I actually forgot to do that. But the essentially the crocodiles would kind of come in through that little section right there. They'd swim in. All the guests would clap and cheer and whatnot. I think that'd be a really cool thing to experience in real life. I don't know. I hope I get to go to Australia. And especially the Australia Zoo. I feel like that'd be a really fun thing to do. But um... Yeah, working on some other planters as well because I was too lazy to actually make those curves. Fun fact. So we kind of fake it a little bit with some planters. And that's always a really good way just to integrate a lot more, you know, a lot more color into your builds. A lot more naturalism. Uh, especially with like these beautiful palm trees that I'll use later. Before we actually do end up doing that, I do some like custom fencing as well. So we have this double fence because the crocodiles are very aggressive animals. We don't want them going into like the crowds and biting uh, little Jimmy's arm off. So we kind of work with that a little bit. And I think it turns out pretty well. 
Uh, really fun job working on like this um, custom fencing. It's just a couple mesh pieces and a couple cables. It's nothing crazy, but it really does help to kind of like upgrade your fencing a little bit more. And I don't know, I'm very happy with that. And here we actually go working on those little planter areas. Just using my like, you know, favorite kind of palette with like the ponytail palms, the bromeliads, and a couple extra palms to begin with. So we have all that come into play, and I also wanted to incorporate this. This is kind of like a little standing pad for the, like, all the keepers and stuff like that who would be doing the shows. It's a nice way to get, like, your grip on the floor, rather than standing on, like, the grass and the mud, which I would assume it would kind of get like that during the wet season. And especially in Boggy Bottom, this entire place is so boggy. But moving on throughout here and just making sure that the fencing is taken into account for and just making sure that everything looks nice and flows nicely. I'm trying to think of what else to say about this, but I don't know. Just trying to integrate that little um, plaster walkway over there really nice and organically. So we kind of do copy that on the other side as well, making sure that it's nice. It flows nicely. Um, and we also do a little bit of a custom planter over here. I didn't want a big kind of like a square one but i do work with a rectangle not a rectangle oh my gosh i gotta go back to kindergarten uh, a little bit of a triangle right here um and it looks pretty good i don't know it's just a nice little way to get a little bit more plants in i guess i don't really know but i don't know i'm just very happy with how well this is all shaping up i don't know i hope you guys are enjoying it if you guys have ever wanted to build a crocus team i really do suggest you guys do because it's so fun i don't know it was just really fun to do a very unconventional build in planet zoo for like you know one of the first times ever i kind of like put that there as a placeholder i actually used the uh garage door or whatever later down the line but making our way throughout here and i think i do some work for uh custom like pillars and stuff like that just making sure that stuff is able to feel a little bit more integrated a little bit more solid where we're building uh and i just really want to have that all come into play especially with um those what do you call those uh stairs yeah stairs i forgot the word stairs isn't that great <laughs> um but no especially with working with stairs i needed to get a little bit of a railing and a little bit of support over there to make sure that the guests don't actually have the chance to fall so we do work with that and we actually do hide that piece right there i think that's kind of funny a little cheeky right there so we kind of work with that and we also do a couple more pillars all throughout here and we kind of just double them up on each other, just making sure that it's able to feel a little bit more supported, uh, make it feel a little bit more solid and whatnot. And we kind of copy that all throughout the other side as well. And we kind of do like cap that off right there. I don't know. I really do like that. And we just turn that area into a planter because why not? You know, we got to get that natural foliage in here some way or another. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I just really do like that. It just feels so nice, so organic. And it's a really awesome way to integrate a lot more bigger trees. So I'm using the Doom Palms in here just because they really do scream like tropical to me. I really wanted to get those in there anyway. So there we go right there. And we're working on the rest of like, you know, the fencing and whatnot. Just making sure that our crocodiles aren't able to escape. I think I actually do cover this up with some, I want to say the gravel. I want to say, yeah, probably gravel. Uh, just a really good way to kind of integrate all that. And we're working on the roof now. Because God forbid I actually stay on one thing for too long. Um, so I do a custom roof over here. I want to have it nice bright blue. Uh, kind of like a navy blue. And kind of accent that with some, uh, I don't know what you call those. I guess corrugated lines. So we have that all come into play. And we also do some custom bottoms as well. Just because I don't really like the bottom of that all too much for what I was going for. Uh, we're using those carbon fiber pieces from the Australia pack. We kind of have those come into play right there, and we kind of do a nice little custom roof. I even did, like, custom support beams. That's what I was so excited about, so we have all that come into play. And also just trying to work with all that jazz right there, just making sure that it all lines up nicely. And we have that go across there. It looks so cool when you're actually down below it. I don't know, it just feels so nice and so industrial, if that makes sense. I'm really, I'm really digging this build in particular. It was just really fun to do something completely new. Something I really haven't done before. I don't know. It was just really a fun challenge to do. Especially for like a semi-recreation like this. I don't know. It was just pretty fun. So we have all that come into play. I really want to have this feel very nice, modern. 
uh, really timeless, if that makes sense. So we have all that come into play, and we also do some custom support beams. So these will go over the seats, but very much like at a baseball stadium, uh, we just take those seats out. We wouldn't want anyone to feel very cramped in there. So we kind of have that all come into play, and we repeat that on the other sides as well, just making sure that the other ones are feeling nice and supported. I'm not sure if this would hold true structural integrity all that well. I gotta circle back and actually make sure that it would. So we just have all that come into play, and we're using the upside down lavender. Uh, just as a way to give a nice like new kind of plant look and i figured something was a little bit missing from this entire build so i really want to have these nice faux rock structures uh, maybe they would have like the bird displays like pelicans or something or storks go on top of these maybe they'd retrieve some things i really just wanted that all to come into play right there and i wanted an alligator not an alligator but a crocodile for scale right there so we kind of play with that and I wanted to keep this separate from the main pathway as well, so we have a new custom fence over here. And I think I do need to bring this over to the blueprint pile, uh, just so you guys can use as many blueprints as possible from this build. And we kind of do kind of a little bit more of a custom, like, bamboo fence. And we kind of change the colors out a little bit, and we kind of stagger them a little bit more, just to make sure it feels a little bit more, I don't know, organic, if that makes sense. Uh, and we also do some cool entryways as well. It's a very simple entryway. It's a very much full rock and whatnot. Just a really awesome way to scale a little bit more theming in there. Even though, like, it's not really too themed. I feel like the theming is the fact that it doesn't really have theming. But we kind of work some in nonetheless. So we're kind of working with all that right there. Making sure that we get rid of our archers because I accidentally grouped them in right there. And just checking out like the scale of the build, seeing what's missing. And I also do add a lot of foliage in here. A lot of plants, so I use the periwinkles, I use the crowberry bushes. And I do end up doing a little bit of a dirt path. I'm not sure if that comes in with this video or not. But I do add another gate right there. And you can see that little green spot in the middle of the asphalt right there. That's where the crocodiles would come out. Just to give the guests a little bit more of a closer look. They'd probably have them on like a leash or something. Just so that, you know, the guests would stay nice and safe. But they'd probably go right there. But either way, working on the exterior of the build as well. Just making sure that the foliage really blends in nicely with the surrounding areas. And I do kind of continue this ghost gum grove a little bit more. Just as a way to, um... I don't know, really integrate a lot more color, especially with how beautiful those trees kind of look and how Australian they feel. I don't know. I just really do love having those little two groves on the north side and the south side of the park. It really does look so well. And just integrating the rest of the foliage in here, especially with those reeds and just trying to get as much foliage and like tree work and like, you know, forest in here as possible. And also adding the cypress trees down below, like near the water as well, because that looks pretty nice. Here's our actual like setup for the Colosseum, or rather Crocosseum. Uh, it looks pretty good in the end. I don't know, I'm just very satisfied with how well that all came out. It just looks really nice, I don't know. I, it's just very simple. I should probably do like a sign, like a nice custom sign later. Uh, I really haven't worked on that just yet, but maybe later down the line I can, uh, because I still have a few other things to do before holiday for me, so I'm kind of working on that all, like, very much <laughs> trying to get stuff done, but trying to chug along with all this, get our custom, uh, again, I keep on forgetting the word for that, curbs, getting our custom curbs going and making sure that they all flow nicely with the rest of the park. It looks pretty good in the end, and I also got away with a little bit of it by doing some, like, gravel work up there, so that's pretty nice. And I don't know. I gotta decorate this area soon. I think we're gonna have one big episode where we actually work on, like, a restaurant kind of area for this. Like, I planned a room for a restaurant area. It's not going to have any animal views or anything like that, but I think we'll have a little bit of fun with that once we actually do get there. But making sure that the paths work out all nicely, I plopped those in the blueprints right there. And I started to get rid of some of the tree lines for the actual um, habitat itself, but I didn't want to work on it at that point, so it's going to be in a future episode. But here we actually are in the B-roll, so I 
do want to thank you guys for stopping by. Hope you guys enjoyed this quite a big build. Oh my gosh, this took me a couple hours to do, but it was so much worth it in the end. It was just really fun to put together. And I don't know, it's just a very dynamic, very unique build. So I really hope this like makes its way as a beautiful, beautiful contender for like the centerpiece of the zoo. It was a really fun thing to do. And I'm so happy that we finally have our like you know, our piece de resistance, our little centerpiece in this park. Uh, especially since it's kind of in the center of everything. It's more so in, like, the north than anything else, but that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this little episode. If you did, be sure to drop a like, maybe, and drop a comment if you're so inclined to. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.